Welcome back to the Perfected Health Podcast. This is episode 10, Magnesium. We are back with Victor after that excellent presentation on Kiefer two weeks ago. If you guys haven't checked that out, you definitely should, as it is the most important thing I have included in my diet. And more recently, Magnesium, which is something I've had deficiencies in for a while and something I've been working on, we're going to explain why the average person and probably over 90% of people watching this video are magnesium deficient, why it's so important, and how to incorporate various things into your daily life. Yeah, awesome. Glad to be back, Frank. Um, Yeah, you know, you hit the nail on the head. Magnesium is so important. And probably if someone's watching this, right, exactly, I'm sure they're deficient, or at least 90% of those people. And it's important for like so many things. I, I couldn't even fit it all on like the board behind me. Uh, some people are aware of some of the obvious or simple things like relieving migraines or getting rid of sore muscles. You know, the, some people might know about that, but it's critical for so many other things. You know, I just up. thought it's okay. actually sold in uh, CVS and Walgreens as magnesium citrate. It's a laxative. Uh, yes, right. That's another one. And I, I don't even think I bothered putting that up here, but that's one of the most common things. And it, that, it's ironic because it works really good as a laxative, which means you're probably also not really absorbing the magnesium from that supplement, which is sad because again, as we said, we're deficient, but yeah, that's another really good one. Uh, And so I I think it really slides under the radar because it's literally like a miracle cure for so many things, uh, for many different heart conditions or anything connected to our electrical health which is also like, again, the idea with like muscle spasms and cramps and such, uh, but also, you know, for making strong bones, for helping to keep the calcium out of your arteries, right? Uh, it, it's important for a lot of helping or assisting in a lot of other minerals. It's really a coenzyme for assisting like three or 400 other enzymes in the body. So we can really like, we can go on for so many things. And for me, maybe one of the most critical things is it's so important for detox. We'll, we'll burn up a lot of magnesium for detox. And again, the, the people watching or listening to this, they're probably very toxic. And so they need, they're going to need assistance with detox and magnesium is going to help with that and also boosting energy, et cetera. Yeah, it seems like all of those things you mentioned are almost ways that the magnesium deficiency is manifesting itself. You know, it's, yeah. it's one thing, it's one thing to say that magnesium does positive things or the other way we could say it is because you don't have enough magnesium, you're experiencing negative or you're not optimal in all of these aspects. So, you know, before we go really in depth on each of those functions of magnesium, we have to explain why you're deficient and the different lifestyle and modern factors that are causing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, what's interesting is Like we're both fans of the Western Price Foundation or Western Price Diet. People that are basically eating perfect like our ancestors did, they're still very likely to be deficient in magnesium because all the plants, the the animals, and the soil are deficient in magnesium because we've raped the soils of it. And we don't replenish it, right, with the fertilizers, et cetera. So that's, I guess that's the key, the key thing is we just are no longer able, or most people are no longer able to get magnesium from their diet. You just, you can't, you got, you basically have to supplement, but you got to supplement the right way. Yeah. People think on the carnivore diet, just because meat has some magnesium in it, that it's enough. And that, oh, the magnesium in plants isn't bioavailable. So now that I'm carnivore Mm. and I'm getting highly bioavailable magnesium, then it's going to be okay. But that's absolutely not the case. Right, right. Well, yeah, and I guess you would know from lots of experience with so many of the clients you've worked with on carnivore. Um, Yeah, so, right, that's the problem, right? We just can't, I mean, I would love to say we can, right? We still want to get the best diet we can so that we don't have to supplement as much. But there's like two, two supplements that I always recommend to my clients and magnesium is one of them. Uh, with yeah, regard too. to like nutrients. Yeah. Every it's... single consultation I've ever had, basically 500 milligrams of magnesium minimal without question. Right. Right. And then we get into the trick of, are they actually absorbing that? Mm-hmm. Right. So that's the, that's the other complicated factor when we get into the magnesium. So 
Um, as most people are probably aware, I am, I always try to push people towards magnesium oil, which is not actually an oil, but I always try to push people that way because again, right, most of your clients or most of the people watching or listening to us, they have digestive issues, they have health issues, their magnesium absorption is very likely compromised. They could end up getting diarrhea from taking the magnesium supplement. And so if we go topically uh, with magnesium oil, which is not an oil, it just feels like an oil, but it's basically, it's magnesium chloride. Yeah, the, it's the magnesium oil is magnesium chloride, magnesium mm -hmm. with down to the chloride molecule. And it's sold as right. like a, a spray. So you like spray mm -hmm. it on your body. And some of you guys that watched my channel a couple of years back probably remember I was going crazy with magnesium oil for like two or three weeks just, and I looked like I was some sort of weird flaking pastry because of the oil the drying. Yeah, it was drying. Yeah, yeah. The salt was drying out on my skin and flaking all over the place. <laughs> it looked kind of crazy. And I stopped because it was just irritating my skin so much. Mm. Uh, but I should have yeah. probably kept to it. Well, you know, one trick to that is uh, mixing MSM in with the magnesium oil. And there is actually even one brand. So I, I always, I make my own and always advise my clients to do it because it's so much cheaper. And then you can control the saturation rates, how much magnesium you mix with your distilled water and also how much MSM you add. So in that case, regardless of your skin type, you'll be able to get a situation where it's not too irritating because yeah, it'll itch, it'll burn, and that's mostly because you're deficient, but some people are also have very sensitive skin. So what do you just take some magnesium chloride with some water and MSM and mix it together in a spray bottle and just spray exactly. it all over the place? Exactly, exactly. And then make, you make sure to rinse out the Windex before you do that, boys. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, and then, you know, so you find the ratios that are comfortable for you. And then you also find the areas on your body. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, I, I actually do my head since I usually don't have hair there. Yeah. Uh, which is good because you're, you'll actually more likely to get direct absorption to the organs. So they'll, it'll, they'll tell you spray it over your organs. Yeah. It, Let's jump back to, uh, so we know that modern diet doesn't have enough magnesium, mm -hmm. you know, regardless of what food you're eating, unless you eat a quarter pound of chocolate every day, you're not getting a significant amount of magnesium. One, th one thing that we should mention is, you know, the reason a lot of people drink coffee is probably because the small magnesium content of coffee and the caffeine can kind of alleviate uh, a lot of stress of the magnesium deficiency and also possibly some EMF factors. But we have to consider that there's antagonistic minerals and vitamins to magnesium that are much, much higher in our modern diets and lifestyles. So you have calcium is one, you have even people getting, I mean, a lot of people are supplementing vitamin D without magnesium, which is a big issue. Imagine you supplement vitamin D for two, three, four, five years, which I did without taking magnesium. There's, there's a whole lot of modern health solutions and ways people are making themselves magnesium deficient just by trying to fix their health in other ways. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you mentioned the vitamin D because that's, that's kind of really trendy for everybody to really mega dose on vitamin D and that will deplete magnesium, boron, a lot of different things because it, it needs a lot of metabolites. So that, like you said, there's all of these kind of hidden hazards. And of course, there, most people, again, tend to have too much calcium, not enough magnesium. Um, magnesium will actually raise your vitamin D levels, which is another, without needing to do the extra supplementation of the D. So with all things being equal, if you just add magnesium, you're probably going to see your D levels go up. Which is which is quite interesting, yeah. So we do we do have to be careful, which again is why I, I really don't like to supplement, right? We want to get our nutrients from the food, but again, magnesium is one of those exceptions, and you can really supplement with a lot of magnesium, without without worrying so much about like damaging yourself. Uh, not you know we can overdose on anything, right? So I mean you know you take too much water, you can kill yourself. Generally speaking, it's a very safe thing uh, to take in a supplement. What's form. not safe is people taking all this potassium. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, no. I mean, I, I did a video on potassium. It was actually titled Stop Taking Potassium, I think. And I, at the beginning of the video, I basically screamed at the camera, Stop taking potassium. Mm. I mean, 
right. especially the keto people, they're probably depleting their magnesium like crazy. Right. They're depleting right. their sodium. They're causing all of these issues. Right. Yeah. Right. There, there is, it is very risky to supplement anything in isolation. Um, what's interesting is when, when we're supplementing, like, again, my favorite is the magnesium chloride. The, the, the chloride is also a very good thing to get into the body, right? It's very helpful for us. So that's, um, again, you're, your supplement, the goal is supplementing with magnesium when we're talking about magnesium oil, but we're getting actually two good supplements that are coming into the body in a very safe way. Um, and we're, again, if we go topical, we don't have to worry about the issues with the digestive system. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, no diarrhea. We know we're getting good absorption. We can target areas. Uh, it's, yeah, it's just really good to supplement. Yeah, back to the, the vitamin D stuff. You, what you can do is you can test your blood levels for uh, 25 OHD, which mm -hmm. is going to be basically right. your, you know, how much is being stored in the body. And then you can test for mm -hmm. calcidiol, calcitriol, which are going to be active forms of vitamin D. So, I mean, those tests can be expensive and it might be hard to get your doctor right. to do that. But right. when one's going to be substantially higher, like this, if the storage form is substantially higher than the active form, you know, there's likely a magnesium deficiency. And when you start taking vitamin D and getting insomnia, that's also a sign of a magnesium deficiency and that you have an excess of vitamin D stored in your body. So if you guys are watching this and you've been supplementing vitamin D for years and you haven't taken magnesium, what you basically have to do is you know stop the D3, probably supplement a ton of magnesium, supplement some K2 for months to even a year or two. It's not you know exactly mm -hmm. a quick fix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad I should have had sleep written up here, actually, because that's a big one. I actually put my magnesium oil on at night mm -hmm. yeah, to make sure it helps. Um, and that is another it's another very interesting point about the testing. So our testing for all the different things is really pretty terrible. Um, so we still know so little. We're still not able to test for everything. And magnesium also has this issue because mostly they're going to test for magnesium serum levels in the blood. And that can be high or it can be adequate and you'll still be deficient because we real, what's really important is the ionic magnesium at the cellular level. And so the blood serum tests for magnesium do not give us an indication of that. So that's, an, that's another issue. Testing is a big, a big problem with so many things uh, with the vitamin D2 because um, the doctors don't dig deep enough and we have so many different tests. So the best, the best way to make sure we have what we need is to eat the right foods. And in the case of magnesium to, to supplement and then kind of listen to the body. Uh, like you said, I think sleep, that's another really good thing. Um, I, right, it's going to, you know, you mentioned earlier about how it's going to manifest, right? That deficiency is going to manifest in so many different ways. And it's going to be different for different people. Like some people, it could be asthma. Right. And, and this is related to the muscular contractions and supplementing with magnesium can make asthma go away for some people. Right. So that, that deficiency can really manifest in a lot of different ways. And for a lot of people, it is a sleep issue that surfaces. So that's another. Yeah. We should definitely touch on uh, modern calcium intake and, mm. and how calcium is a direct antagonist to magnesium. And there, have, uh, I've heard it on more than one occasion that if you take X amount of calcium, you should take at least the equivalent amount of magnesium or more. Yeah, I like that. I like that advice. It sounds really good to me. So, so if you're would, yeah. you know, drinking a lot of dairy, if you're eating a lot of dairy products, milk, yep. cheese, dairy is the big issue here. If you're, if you're consuming a lot of dairy on a daily basis, you probably need to supplement over a thousand milligrams of magnesium per day, maybe even closer to 1500, which sounds absolutely crazy. Now, if you're drinking a high mineral water like Gerol Steiner, which is, you know, maybe 200 milligrams of calcium and 100 milligrams of magnesium, then you're going to have to supplement a little more magnesium than normal. So keep in mind, you know, do you have a super high bioavailable calcium source in your diet, particularly the dairy, particularly the mineral water that you need to counterbalance with right. some more cal uh, with some more magnesium? Right, right. Broth can be very helpful for some. Again, though, right, we never know how much magnesium is in the animals and the plants, but Broth is another good source for the minerals and the magnesium. Um, if you're doing the broth the right way, right, and it is coming from really good, healthy animals on that are raised on good pasture, et cetera. Uh, yeah, so there, I mean, there's a lot to look out for, but again, 
yeah, I think the magnesium oil makes it pretty, I want to say it makes it pretty easy. And again, that's going to depend on the person. Some people hate the idea of spraying something on their body. Uh, right. And they, and they might feel irritation. Some people are more sensitive, uh, but you might also see amazing results uh, in all, you know, in so many of these different areas. So you never, you never know, right. Mm -hmm. You never know. It depends how, again, how that deficiency has manifested in you. Um, you might see uh, if it comes to like bone strength, it's bone strength, right? So in, in the elderly, they're really, they're, they're, they've probably already got issues with their bones, osteoporosis, et cetera. And the doctors tell them to just take calcium, right? So so many people say, yeah, Horrible. look, you need, yeah. right. And, and it is like suicide, right? And it only just makes the issue worse. worse. And you, now we get the hardening of the arteries, right? So we, we need the magnesium, the vitamin D. Yeah. The I mean, I, the yeah, I've talked about, I talked about this even two years ago. I had a video yeah. titled calcium is dangerous. It's it's so horrible. Yes, that's one of I. I would agree. I mean, like our cells are calcified. There's a there's a lot of really cool therapies that I like for getting the calcium out of the cells. You know, like the um, I know I can't even think off the top of my head the names, but there's a lot in different cultures. There are different therapies for like the deep tissue massage, where we're literally breaking up the calcification, right, and trying to get that calcium out at the cellular level. Because that, right, that's how toxic calcium is. I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, the heart disease, stroke, all of these different things. I mean, calcium is a culprit. Yeah, I did a video on on calcification too, and I explained how your bones have the osteoblasts and the osteoclasts, and the cells in your bone matrix behave in a certain way. But once there is excess calcium in the body, soft tissue cells start behaving like bone cells. And it's really, really crazy. And then they start storing calcium in, in different parts of the body. So once yeah. you have a certain calcium threshold that you've reached, and then you're not getting enough D3, you're not getting enough K2, you're not getting enough magnesium, all of the other cofactors and antagonists mm -hmm. to calcium. So you're not getting everything you're needing to use up that calcium. Your body just stores it everywhere. Mm. So it's like a lifelong yeah. accumulation yep. almost. And then, yeah. and then your body is just at this you know, hypersensitive state where it's almost impossible to fix and you're going to doctors, people in hospitals. Right. Right. Exactly. And they, they, they don't even think about looking at that. It's like a slow death, right? You just, you're slowly just turning to stone, you know, but it, it definitely can be reversed and magnesium is really key to that. So it, it is, it's really amazing. Our ability to recover is miraculous. It's incredible. Um, we just got to, we just have to know the right ways to recover, right? So we can't go, uh, we can't just suck the, the calcium out of the body. It's not that simple, right? So you, you, you try to get it out of one place, it's going to end up in another area. So you, you got to balance we, and magnesium is a key point. Um, and the D, yeah, and I, like, I know you talk a, a lot about the vitamin D and a lot of people know about that. The K2, I think is also more trendy. A lot more people are aware of the K2. Magnesium is a little bit more of a secret. Uh, boron is another one um, that's pretty important. But we got the, the, any boron bros watching? Uh, are there? <laughs> it's an inside joke. I remember that's maybe cool. last year, the year before, I had people just commenting about boron on my channel every day, like boron's a miracle. If you take boron every day, it boosts your testosterone. And yeah, oh, maybe man. some people are so deficient in boron that once they take it, they feel a little better. But Taking That's it on funny. a consistent basis is by no means going to give you the same boost of fixing a deficiency. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. And you don't need a lot of boron. You don't need a lot. So it is tricky to get, but, um, but yet magnesium, we need a lot more of, cause we, we can really burn up so much magnesium. Uh, and it's just, imp it's important for so many things. Yeah. So we have, roughly 25 grams of body storage, according to some questionable Google sources. But you know, do we have a, an estimation of how much magnesium the body is using a day? I would imagine it can be well over one gram. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. In fact, I, again, like if we consider the audience of people that are listening to us, they're likely very toxic. They're going to burn up a lot more than the average person. So I think it's a, I won't say it's exponential, you know, I'm not sure where the range can be, but the range will be really dramatic on how much we can use in a day. Because when you're detoxing 
or if you're an athlete and you're a toxic athlete, which again, most athletes are toxic, they got a bad diet, you can burn up. So if you bring in, what happens is if you bring in a lot more magnesium, your body's just going to detox better and using that magnesium. So you can keep bringing in more. And there are signs, you know, if you start getting like how crazy heart palpitations and stuff, you'll know you've gone too far, but it's, it's pretty hard to go overboard on the magnesium. The, unless you're taking internally, that's because then we're going to get like really crazy digestive issues with bad diarrhea. Right. So that's where we'd have to. Yeah, really no, the the second it. you take too much magnesium orally, you're going to know. Right. Right. Exactly. And, and what's sad is that can make you back off and you're yeah. still going to be deficient. Most a, a safe dose, I would say, to start is 100 milligrams orally. Um, that, that's on an empty stomach. Um, if you go above 100 milligrams on an empty stomach, you might feel a little queasy. Uh, then with a meal, you can probably take a few hundred pretty safe, three, four, five hundred and not really feel anything. Uh, when, once you go over that, though, depending on the person, depending on the type of magnesium, uh, that's the issue. So let, let's just right. jump real quick into chelations and different types of magnesium. Uh, first, I want to mention magnesium oxide, which is what they've been putting in supplements for probably dozens of years because it's cheap, has right. an incredibly low bioavailability. I think it's like two or three percent. It's insane. It doesn't even work. Right. And it's actually uh, it's pretty much poison. Uh, so magnesium oxide, which you'll see in most supplements, even multivitamins now, still very, very popular, is what you mm -hmm. absolutely want to avoid. Uh, magnesium citrate, which I like to refer to as shit trait, because it's the right. it's the laxative. It's right. makes it's, it's not good that, as a laxative. Yeah, it's not that great on the stomach. It doesn't it might absorb okay, but if that's if yeah. it doesn't just completely, you know, destroy your bowels. Uh glycinate, 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 however you want to say it. It is definitely the best one. It's, you know, magnesium bound to the glycine molecule. Not only are you getting magnesium, you're getting glycine, mm -hmm. which people also are typically deficient in. It's pretty easy on the stomach. And uh, you said, well, you said there's malate. some hype around some, uh, oh, yeah, there's malate. Malate's I think malate's pretty good too. Yeah. yeah. Malate, malate has uh, been one of my favorite ones because they are um, for internal because it's popular for slow release capsules. So there's less chance of the I digestive see. issues. So you get that steady stream. Um, so that's, that's a pretty good one. And, um, theonate, the, the L L theonate is again, a popular trendy one that you'll see supposedly better for brain health, better brain absorption. But again, this is really not true. You know, like all of these magnesium supplements, they're tiny nanoparticles, you know, they're, they're going to get, they're basically going to get everywhere. Uh, but as you said, they're not really, Bi as bioavailable because of the different molecules, right? But they're small enough to cross the blood brain blood brain barrier. Yeah, let's just just uh, back to the chelations. When we say malate, we mean malic acid. It's usually a food additive. I mean, apples have like different types of acid and flavors and foods, like citric acid, malic acid, which malic tends to be more sour. So they're they're probably extracting it from some type of food. Uh, the theanine which is the magnesium L-theonate is actually some type of amino acid found in plants, which I, you could argue isn't really natural. And then you have the glycine, which is probably made from like agrochemical meat waste or something. So obviously not right. every, no supplement is perfect. There, there's always right. a downside to a supplement, but unfortunately it's the only real way you can get this realistically. It's the only way you can do it. A lot of people are averse to supplementing. A lot of people, right. especially um, the raw primal dieters, uh, are very, very, very averse to supplementing, which is horrible because they, you know, they consume a lot of dairy. They don't want to take anything. They never fix their issues. But you know, th there's lesser evils and a small amount of oxidative stress from how the supplement was made is certainly, you know, I mean, it's not comparable to having a magnesium deficiency. Right. Well, the, my favorite is the magnesium chloride. The magnesium chloride, is, I think, is so. I, I'm. I would argue with anybody that that is the the absolute best way to supplement, even if you want to do it internally, um, because it's so it's so flexible to use yes, it. It's, it's chloride. It's basically yeah, just magnesium yeah. and two chloride atoms attached to one magnesium atom. So it's a very simple thing. Um, and again, using it topically, but you can use it internally too. Oh, you know, the, what we should um, really mention is uh, those um, those trace mineral seawater supplements and how they're oh, actually toxic. Uh, well, they're mostly magnesium oxide in the in this those supplements there, there was um really good. there there were some that were just people were getting kidney damage and horrible yes. horrible issues liver so, damage destroying their organs and body right. uh let me actually just 
get the name of that company just to make sure you guys don't. It's very, very popular. It's scary. Uh, it's called really just Trace, Trace Mineral Drops. It's a very, very popular brand. Thousands, probably millions and millions of people have it in the United oh, States, especially. You're talking about Concentrace. I actually like Concentrace, but it's abused. There, there is, like there's been things, problems. Right? I'm not sure if it's with Concentrace specifically. Or another the, brand. Maybe I think it might actually be Concentrace. There's people that have had heavy metal issues, kidney damage, liver damage from, from that. You could just read the, they're old. I don't mm -hmm. know if they deleted the reviews, but I, I took it. I felt horrible and it tastes horrible too. Um, I, I would be careful with something like that. Mainly because I saw those reviews of people having kidney damage. Um, Is it, um, there's, there's a lot of things out there that sell these mineral packets that you add to water to make your own mineral Those water. are probably just as bad too. Exactly. Those, those are the ratios. Right. Oh yeah, we, we definitely have I to touch on electrolyte things. supplements. Yeah. They don't even have, they don't have the right, right. ratios. They don't have the right collations. Right. It's, it's horrible, right. horrible, horrible. There's an interesting thing with the electrolytes because a lot of people end up being electrolyte deficient, but then electrolytes are a really trendy, hot topic. Tons of things on the market. So then a lot of people end up overdoing the electrolytes. And yeah, that's we should leads do, to uh, we should, maybe we could do our next podcast on electrolytes. Yeah, that's it. That's point a is idea. point is be yeah. careful. Yes, right. Be careful. You listen to your body. You don't need to take them. Right. Be careful. Be you don't really need to take them. Right. Yeah. If you and if you're basically if people are listening to your videos, they're they're doing kefir, they're doing broth, they have a good diet, they got all the electrolytes they need. Yeah, they I mean, need you know, it's they just don't need to do anything extra. I got the same issue with a lot of clients that I deal with, like. Um, because maybe like seawater is another trendy thing. And then people are doing that on top of every, everything else. And I'm like, no, stop the seawater. You're going to destroy your kidneys. Yeah. Um, yeah. So destroy you, kidneys right, is it, a bit of an understatement. It's right. Oh my yeah. God. Right. So you want to be, you want to be careful. Um, and it's the same thing with these magnesium supplements. Uh, like we don't know what they're putting in it. The three anine. Um, yeah, three anine. That's a patented, that's actually a patented product. Okay, which is interesting because you know, you, you had mentioned a lot of these things aren't really natural, and that's a pretty good example. And that's the reason why it gets pushed, right? Because they're making money. Whereas magnesium chloride, again, this is a pretty natural thing. Like it's sold in Japan as Nigati salt. You know, um, it's relatively easy, so there's no patents locking it up. And you don't now even there too. When you're looking for magnesium chloride, you don't need to spend ten times as much to get some special magnesium chloride. Yeah, there's a lot of marketing BS and that, and that's how right. a lot of these companies make money. They right. they hype something up. They I mean, they have all types of scummy marketing tactics, but you know, if someone's right. trying to sell you the world as a supplement, something fishy's up. Right, right, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, be careful, uh, don't get pulled in by all that marketing hype. Uh, magnesium is definitely super important and you probably uh, most likely you need it and you need quite a bit. Uh, but just I mean, if you really, you have to just really think about things, take a step back, say, Hey, mm. let's look at the key. You know, we spoke about the chelations. Well, yeah. Glycine chloride. They're obviously the most natural ones. It's almost like salt and then glycine, the yeah. amino acid animal. It's, it's very, very simple. And you actually right. look into what it is. It, it's kind of hard because people don't really think like that anymore. Right. Right. Well, and we get, you know, we get brainwashed by all the marketing and there's a lot, there's actually a lot of good people that are promoting bad products because mm. even they get you know they get roped in they get brainwashed uh the same thing you know like i even like i like to look at doctors as victims rather than the bad guys because they've been brainwashed they've been coerced etc and you know they don't look deep enough and mm -hmm. so we just we need to really dig deep and understand what's going on and then like in my experience I just, I see the magic. And if you want, one of my heroes is Dr. Carolyn Dean and her, she got this book, the magnesium miracle. And that, that was what that like really opened my eyes. And, uh, but even, even she, and I mean, I love her, but even she, she sells her product called Remag, but it's just magnesium chloride. Mm -hmm. so, so you can you could still actually go out and make your own magnesium oil much cheaper um so for people that are really on a budget and they're thinking oh man i gotta go out and i gotta like spend more money on another supplement you can make this pretty cheap you know the and and again too like i mentioned you you want to maybe you want to add msm into that msm is also cheap mm -hmm. 
and you can make you know you spend I a little actually, money i think i have a bottle of it right here hold on do you oh that would be yeah. awesome i think i don't have any within reach yeah i actually haven't used oh, it in a is while. that ancient is that ancient yeah, minerals? Yeah, yeah. yeah ancient minerals yep. yeah okay so uh, if i that's magnesium the brand. oil yep it's a uh, water and magnesium chloride and i probably pay 20 Bingo. bucks for this plastic bottle <laughs> right right exactly that is you know what's funny is i i always tell people make your own but some people look it's worth the convenience to pay the money that's the brand i recommend ancient minerals has one called ultra and it just has msm added into it and that's enough again it's fantastic yeah, I'll, I'll, guys i'll put that on my amazon shop yeah. we'll link that down below for you guys cool. uh if yeah, you guys definitely. are interested what's what's nice is you'll notice on their product there's no other additional garbage there mm -hmm. yeah i mean you just read the ingredients that's all there is and and the same thing their ultra one just has msm added in and they use a good msm in there so it's yeah good stuff i got nothing against ancient minerals uh good product and I, same thing i have clients they get good results with that too and you really you see amazing things um I give an example. Uh, uh, just before you jump into that, can you briefly yeah. explain what MSM is and just confirm that it's a transdermal absorption? Ah, yes. Okay. So it is basically a one atom of sulfur with two clusters of CH3, two methyl groups. Yeah. Okay. That's all MSM is. We as humans, we always had MSM because it comes down in the rain. Okay, so we were rained on, all our plants or animals had it. We consumed so much MSM. And that's another, like, you, we can do an hour long video on all the things it's good for. It helps with methylation, it helps with detox. Uh, it's a precursor to glutathione, uh, precursor to collagen. Sulfur is essential. Um, so the reason why it's helpful with the magnesium is because MSM, sometimes you'll hear people say it's a carrier. But what it really does is it reduces the energy required for your cells to absorb and excrete. That's why it helps with detox. And that's, it helps the magnesium get into the cells. And, and it's also soothing for the skin. So while also making your skin feel better, it's helping the magnesium absorb it better into the skin and actually even penetrate through the, th the, through the skin layers, you know, all these layers of the skin get down in there, get into the bloodstream, et cetera. So MSM is, uh, it's really, it's a simple molecule, but again, we can, I have a pretty long. Yeah. Is, is there a loose comparison we can make MSM versus NAC? Oh man. In fact, I have a video uh, where I talk about that with, um, I'll give a shout out actually to the Candida Slayer, Slayer mm -hmm. uh, Marjo, uh, because yes, absolutely. So it's funny that you hit on that because they're very similar NAC would argue, uh, NAC would ar arguably better be better for the liver, right? Because it's a, they're not the same exact molecules, but a lot of the same impact. But I prefer MSM. So I don't have anything against NAC, but I don't recommend it because with the MSM, you can consume so much MSM, consuming it and using it topically. So you can, you can actually like go up to consuming three tablespoons a day yeah, as a protocol on its own or with other things. And it's, it's support for detox is enormous. And again, in tandem with the magnesium, it's fantastic. So that, that is the only other supplement I recommend. So you just, you just kind of gave away my, my two secret supplements. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to, to nutrients, MSM and magnesium, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, yeah, and they're just, they're a great duo. So. Yeah. I guess before we jump into a little more in depth on the importance of those components of magnesium, uh, we could talk about it being a calcium channel blocker. Uh, so with Wi-Fi EMF radiation, the, the mechanism through which it causes oxidative stress is it flushes calcium into cells. Just calcium where it shouldn't be. Way too much calcium in the cells, mm -hmm. way too much calcium around the body, in your brain, in your organs, everywhere. So since magnesium regulates calcium, it, it alleviates it to some degree. By no means does taking like a, a bottle of magnesium protect you from Wi-Fi, but it's certainly going to help. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, your the help might not be immediate, 
right? But you need to get the calcium out. And magnesium is definitely going to assist with that. I don't, I don't know how much detail I could get into on all the different ways it works for that because it, with regards to the EMF, because it's not only the calcium, calcium is a huge thing, but our electrical health in general is so important. And so magnesium is working not only with calcium, but with many other minerals. And so we need to balance everything. We need to detox again, all of that stuff. We need to get the heavy, the heavy metals out, et cetera. And so it, it helps in a lot of different ways. And the reason why we're more vulnerable to EMFs is because too much calcium, too much heavy metals, the absence of other important electrolytes such as magnesium that allow us to, I don't know if you, electrical regulation would not be, uh, is not a scientific term. But we're talk, when we're talking about like heart health and everything else, magnesium definitely helps with that. So the, the, the electrical health of your body is very important. And I think you've, uh, you've probably talked about grounding a lot and sunshine and you know, all of these things contributed to it. So like when we have a battery, right? So to have a you know, battery technology, for example, is really very important, right? Like one battery, battery is superior to another because of its chemical composition. It's the same thing with the human body. So you wanna make your body a superior battery. So yet right now, most of us listen, most of the people listening and watching, they probably got too much calcium, not enough magnesium, and they've got other imbalances and the magnesium helps with a lot of that. So you wanna make yourself the best battery it could be. So yeah, that's, that that's kind of, sense. that's almost too complicated and it's, it's very hard to explain mm -hmm. in depth, but you know, back down to the cellular level, mm -hmm. the atoms, you know, what's keeping everything in place on that molecular level, it's energy. So, you know, you think of yes. even just a cable or, you know, a light, there's different components of it that keep it running. Same thing with your body. If, if it's not correct, it's not going to be running optimally and there's going to be issues. Yeah, right. Exactly. hundred percent. So yeah, we're, we're electrical beings, right? I mean, we got all this other, you know, physical stuff, but uh, it's all connected. And so, and it all works together. Right. And, and, and magnesium is a key point, a key uh, element, a key mineral, a key nutrient that most of us are deficient in, unfortunately. We touched on vitamin D, but did we mm. specifically say that vitamin D needs magnesium to be activated? I think, I think we need to be really specific and simple. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a, or maybe we haven't used the word like a cofactor or a yeah. metabolite. Yeah. Right. So magnesium is a cofactor is probably something that many people understand yeah. So, right. It's essential. That's why when you, you take magnesium, your vitamin D levels will go up. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're, you'll feel better, you know, because of the increase in vitamin D because you had enough magnesium to activate it. Right. So we, we've got all these, and that's, that's maybe the most important thing with magnesium. It's a, maybe if we use that word, a cofactor, it's a cofactor or a metabolite for so many things. You'll, you'll also hear it's like a coenzyme for many enzymes. So uh, you just, it's necessary. Magnesium is necessary to make many other things useful. So, yeah. So I think that's, that's really, really key for vitamin D and other stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it's hard. It's hard to keep it simple because magnesium is involved in so many complicated things. And um yeah, I don't just just take your magnesium and just trust us. I mean, it's really even more than we know, because as much as we do know, uh, we still know really nothing. Right. I mean, it's like endless amounts of. Information. Yeah, I mean, those people eating caviar in caves probably know everything there is to know about magnesium, but they're not going to tell us. Uh, right. So <laughs> let's go through uh, the things you put on that presentation and let's kind of like oh, okay. briefly, let's briefly explain each one a, li a little more in depth. And go into detail. Okay. I guess we could start with the heart health. Yep, exactly. And that's related directly to the electrical health that we were talking about. And so you'll get um, maybe it's a, it's a very small amount of people that have something what's called POTS. I don't know if you're 
it, it's a small percentage, but maybe more than, you know, a lot of people like they can't even stand up without feeling like they're going to have a heart attack. And this is this, uh, it's a uh, tachycardia syndrome. And so if you take magnesium and in most of the cases, like the doctors, they won't say anything about it, but you take magnesium and it goes away because again, the electrical health, um, and again, this idea of a battery that, you know, we are, we are electric, we are a battery, your heart, you know, the muscles, right? The muscles, they run on these electric impulses, right? So it's very important for heart health and, and not only for these specific things like POTS, but any kind of cardio issue. A lot of people will see improvements with just magnesium supplementation. Yeah, let's right. move on to migraines. Uh, same thing again with the migraines. Now, this is going to be related more to like muscle tension stuff. So again, uh, and it's a combination of things, right? So it's not really just one thing, but a lot of things that you're going to see here when we talk about migraines, for example, is about, or asthma, I'll even relate the two since they're kind of next to each other. You've got these muscles that are constricting uncontrollably, and then magnesium will get things to relax the way it also will do in the digestive tract. And the, the laxative effects are a little bit more complicated than that, but we can also restore, I don't have written on here, but we can restore the uh, migrating motor complex issues sometimes. Again, because of the, the muscles, we get to control those muscle contractions. We get things to relax, to contract properly, and the issues go away, right? That the migraine headaches go away, heart palpitations go away. So asthma, even asthma. So again, this is because the lungs can relax and the people can breathe. Where does that tie into the, you talk about migraines in the brain. How, how does it tie in with the improved memory? Uh, uh, improved memory is actually not related to the muscle issue. The, so the, the migraines and the memory would be two different things. So the, the brain needs magnesium for its processing in many different ways. It also needs chloride, by the way which is again, why magnesium chloride is really excellent, especially if you do the magnesium right on your head. And so there'll, there'll be different products. For example, they'll say that the, uh, some magnesium supplements will pass the brain barrier better than others, no, it's, yeah. but it's nonsense, right? Nonsense. It's nonsense because the quantity of magnesium oil that you can put on your body exceeds any other way to supplement. You just, you know, you can't, consume tons it's of like magnesium. saying okay this tequila is better because it's going to make you more drunk than that beer but yeah right <laughs> the guy drank 40 beers so it doesn't really yeah, matter right there you go there you go exactly exactly there's nothing yeah. limiting how much magnesium we can take right right yeah right so and it's the same thing so with the improving your memory again you can get a ton in there you can put it right on your head for if you want to supposedly target it it doesn't have to be on your head. It doesn't matter. It's going to be on my head today. right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> why not? So um, actually I didn't do mine today, uh, but yeah. So people will see marked improvement in memory because again, direct the, the brain needs magnesium for many of its functions. Same with, same with energy, right? It's probably a, a big cofactor in carbohydrate and in just ATP, macronutrient metabolism. And in eight, yeah. So in ATP production, there's like, what is it? I think there's like eight phases of ATP production. Magnesium is used in five of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. At least uh, if my memory serves me, your readers can check that out. So go, go and look at the ATP process and the steps or the phases, and you're going to see magnesium is required in most of them. And then you'll understand why just for that, for your mitochondria health, for your ATP production, magnesium is amazing. So that's going to, mm -hmm. it's going to boost your energy for that reason alone. Yeah. So very good for that. How did we say uh, it prevents asthma? Uh, because of it helps the lungs. So what happens with asthma is that you get the muscle spasms, right? Yeah. And so again, there are many, there are many potential reasons for this, right? And so there are, there are many things that will help with asthma. MSM that I mentioned earlier will also help, but it helps the muscles to relax right? And so often you'll get an immediate or a very quick response when people, even, even through oral consumption, um, people will be able to relax. The lungs will relax uh, because the muscles will be able to relax. So a lot, the root cause of a lot of that stuff with the muscle issues is going to be toxins. 
And again, both magnesium and the MSM we mentioned, they also help with the detox. So in addition to directly contributing to the electrical health and the muscle contractions, it's contributing to getting rid of the root cause, enabling the cells to detox better, right? So kind of on, on two fronts, it helps with asthma, at least on two fronts, probably in other ways because it, it helps in so many different ways. So how does magnesium promote hormone health? Is it a cofactor just in a lot of those enzymatic reactions to produce yes, the steroid Yes, exactly. Hormones? Right, right. You just, you can't make the hormones without the magnesium. Mm -hmm. So if you're deficient in that, you're going to be deficient in various hormones. And it helps absorb other minerals? Yes. Yes. So again, this idea of the cofactor. Mm. Uh, so for example, like, like with the calcium that we talked about is, uh, well, you know, the calcium is getting absorbed into the wrong places because of that. Right. Mm. So it's um, sometimes it works a little similar into the way, like uh, often it, we need certain proteins in order to absorb certain minerals and magnesium is another cofactor for absorbing a lot of these different things. So we jump more into why it's so important for detox. Uh, so when you are, when you are detoxing, right. Uh, so you've got, your body has its own detox phases, right? Like this phase one and this phase two, it needs a lot of, again, these cofactors because it takes a toxin and then it has to combine it with other things to base. It still creates like another toxin and then another toxin. And it's actually still toxic and it goes into your bile and then out through the gut. So magnesium is one of those cofactors that is involved in that metabolism or those metabolic processes. It's one of those cofactors. So you can't, you can't get rid of all these toxins if you don't have enough magnesium. So that's one way. The other way that it helps with the detox is because every so every cell in your body is using magnesium to detox so at the cellular level your cells are using magnesium to get things out and so that's why you need it at the cellular level not just the systemically but and it's also why you know we talked earlier about your blood serum levels of magnesium might be okay but blood serum in general is usually a horrible indicator for anything. It doesn't yes. matter what mineral or vitamin it is. It's usually the blood levels are tightly regulated by the body right. and it's going to dump it in the fat. It's going to dump it in the organs. It's going to dump it somewhere where it shouldn't be. And unless you take a tissue sample of your liver, you're not going to know how screwed you are. Right. And they don't do right. living biopsies. So right. unless you're right. about to die. So right. Good luck right. getting exactly. that done. Exactly. Yeah, so you you need you need magnesium at the ionic level, meaning atoms of magnesium in all of your cells. All of your cells use magnesium ions to help detox at the cellular level. So again, it's again why it's great topically using something very simple like just the magnesium chloride. It's very easy to get it in at the cellular level. And now the cells can detox better. Mm -hmm. So that, that can help with something like, for example, histamine issues. You know, it's like the cells, they can't detox the histamine fast enough. Yeah. Right. So they get clogged up. So magnesium, MSM is, is really powerful for that. But ma again, magnesium is still another or another one of the important cofactors for assisting with detox. At the yeah. It's, it's really, I mean, it's really difficult with the modern lives now, how, how, hard it is just to get every single vitamin and mineral in a minimal amount and not have to worry about everything basically being a miracle cure because you were so deficient in it. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, and again, for some people, yeah, it is, but uh, we want it right. You, we got to take a holistic perspective, mm -hmm. just that m magnesium happens to hit on so many different angles, mm -hmm. right? It's just so, it's so important, um, but it's not going to cure everything. Yeah. Right. And not, not all by itself. Right. I think we've convinced everyone that there's a lot of problems in our modern diets with magnesium deficiency, food mm -hmm. quality. We kind of explained mm -hmm. how to supplement it. Let's just give really, really specific details. So, you know, what foods are best for magnesium? How much magnesium should you take? How long should you take it? Right. So I would say, well, we know that the meats are good following a Western A price type of diet, you know, get that, get the the healthiest food you can, right? The pastured meats, uh, yeah, of course you're selling good meats, right? Yeah. 
get get your fruits and veggies you know from the farms i it's a little bit tricky like i try not to recommend very specific food items because different people in different parts of the world they might have a fruit or vegetable that's 10 times better than yeah. something i might recommend in the us yeah. but that general idea get the best quality food you can be, you're going to spend your money, spend it on the food because it's, it's definitely worth it because you're going to get more that way. And, and then mag, and then supplement with the magnesium oil. So, um, I mean, a lot of, a lot of people on your channel are, as you mentioned, you mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of people, they're carnivore based They're they're probably still consuming a lot of really good meats. I hope they're consuming good meats because you're going to get more magnesium. That yeah. Way. I mean, there's still a lot of blowback from the carnivores, the grain fed meat conventional pushers, but uh, uh it's uh, most people especially on my channel do eat the high quality stuff right yeah yeah it's worth it because they you know you're you're you know, like we talked about it before you know it's the soils that have been raped of magnesium but if you're getting meat and fruit and vegetables from responsible farmers that really are doing like regenerative farming there's a there's much better chance that i don't like that word enough. now because it's being thrown around like nonsense it's but trendy. there's a lot of yeah. the quality of the pasture that directly translates to the quality of the meat and when, when you get really mm -hmm. crazy about that stuff and some lunatic farmer wants to charge you 60 dollars a pound for fillet tenderloin because he gave the cattle a magnesium mm -hmm. supplement what, what you got to really do is just figure out what you need to supplement in your diet and just get a reasonably mm -hmm. high quality source right. of meat right yeah, it, magnesium oil is like the, it's the cheapest, easiest so what, way. So what numeric value are we looking for per day? Are we starting with 500 milligrams? Are we going up to one gram? How high are we going? How low do we want to so, start with? So since we can't be sure of how much a person is absorbing, if they're doing internally, the, the goal is to actually absorb three to 400 milligrams a day. Yeah. But it's very hard to know if that's happening. Even topically, you're not going to absorb 100% of it. But so you can really go overboard. Yeah, you can go a thousand, mm. you know, with no problem. So you, I, I like for people to try to get in touch with their body. Don't don't be afraid to go overboard with a topical. We do have to again, right? We have to worry about the digestive tract if we go overboard internally. But again, you try. Like like you said, maybe some people are able to take five five hundred milligrams internally with various different supplements, and they might feel great. They might swear by it. So it's up, it's up to the person. We're all different. Just for me, the safest, most effective recommendation I can make is the magnesium chloride topically. And you can also try it internally, dilute it and take it. Don't, by the way, don't spray that magnesium oil in your mouth or you That'd can, it'll feel like an electric shock. <laughs> yeah. It'll it's um, you could try it for fun. I mean, it's not, it's not going to kill anybody. Um, but I've had some funny stories with people accidentally doing that. Uh, but you can dilute it and then you can take it internally. So yeah, the, the target for absorption is three to 400 milligrams a day. Yeah. So it's just, that's the trick. What are you actually absorbing? All right. That's, that's the key. So we need to listen, we need to listen to the body, right? We just yeah. need to go so by just so you guys know, there's, there's 23 grams of magnesium in this bottle. So this is 237 milliliters, quarter liter, and you would probably spray this on your body over the course of two or three weeks at a very high dose. So um, mm -hmm. you can basically, if you want to make your own, you can look at how much is in this and basically just copy it. Say, hey, if you have a, you know, an eight ounce bottle of magnesium spray, you want to put roughly, you know, 25 grams of magnesium in that. Yeah, that's a cool way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, it, and then adjust it to what feels good to your skin. Yeah. Yeah. If it's too strong for you, yeah, you can dilute it and then just spray it over a larger area of your skin or spray it more frequently. And so it's, it's pretty flexible. That's the other thing I like about doing it topically, that flexibility. Yeah. It works out good. I think we covered just about. Yeah. We, we went really in depth. Around. We above some, and beyond for yeah. sure. And some, I, I could have gone into other things it helps with gallstones kidney stones there's just so many things that it helps with it's like it's like just impossible to well, cover yeah, kidney everything stones a lot of time are just calcium yeah. yeah they're basically calcium yeah and 
but and that's exactly why that's helping to get rid of it right so it's helping what was it uh, there's a italian mineral water it'll probably come to me after this but san pellegrino no not pellegrino no. there it's um it's a different one it was very low mineral from a certain mountain it was famous for uh, getting rid of people's kidney stones and the water happened to be low calcium with some magnesium in it. With high, probably a high. Well, yeah. th that's also, the, that's the secret behind a lot of these miracle um, baths that people go to. Aqua these... di Fiuggi. Fiuggi. I don't know if I'm saying it oh, right. Oh, really? Oh, I, mean, no, I don't even know it. It's spelled F-I-U-G-G-I. -G -G -I. Fiuggi. Oh, yeah. I, don't I used to go know down that. to Arthur Avenue and all the, all the cool. Italian shops in the Bronx had that type of water, Fiuggi. That's cool. Yeah. Huh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, I wasn't even familiar with it. But it makes perfectly sense because that that matches up with a lot of the miracle healing wells and stuff. It's because of uh, a lot of times it's because it's very high in magnesium and we're so mm. magnesium deficient. You know, like Epsom salt baths, right? It's not as efficient as doing uh, magnesium oil, but an Epsom salt bath is another way to get magnesium in. Yeah. You know, and it helps the detox at the same time too. Yeah. So... Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's so much great information out there. So many and, there, and a lot of good products, a lot of ways to get your magnesium. Mm -hmm. but eat the good food, you know, Yeah. eat the good meat. Yeah, it's it, more it about pays, more about yeah. removing the negatives than uh, overloading the positive. That's for sure. Yes. Yes. Right. The more positive things we can do, the more negative things we can tolerate. Yeah. So, again, so, it's quite, it's, yeah, Victor, thanks yeah. again for joining me this week. Hey, thank you, man. Thanks for having me again. Uh, that was a blast. And um, yeah, there is, I'm sure we forgot like a hundred things because there's just so much to talk about with magnesium. Um, but yeah, hey, it was a pleasure and I look forward to doing more. And uh, hey, I hope things continue to go well with the meat business because that's, we need the good food to get the magnesium. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, so, so I'll, I'll link all of Victor's stuff down below, the website, his YouTube channel. Definitely go check out his stuff. And uh yeah, I think we'll put together something else for you guys in a week or two. Uh, just let us know what you think down below and what you guys would like us to talk about. Awesome. I'm excited. Sounds good. Thanks again, Frankie. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for joining us. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.